Before we can actually start developing this Agario game, we need to figure out what makes up the core components of the game like this. Because game development is really about breaking down components into smaller, more manageable parts, we must figure out what makes up Agario. In the most basic sense, the gameplay is that the cells follow the user's mouse, but the bigger the cell, the slower it moves. So let's implement that. To begin with, we'll open up Unity, which is a program that gives us an easy to use environment, but is still powerful enough to allow us to create pretty much anything that we want. Now let's create a new project. After naming it, we must set the directory that it's stored. This should just be anywhere that's easy to access for you. Finally, we need to set the project type to 2D. After all, Agario is a two-dimensional game. When we hit the Create Project button, Unity will open, and we'll have a very simple scene. Before we begin programming the mouse follow system, we're going to change the stark blue background to something a little more appealing. To do this, we simply select the main camera in the hierarchy view, and under background, select something a bit more usable. Now let's create the player. To do this, select Game Object, Create Empty. Think of game objects as folders for the hierarchy. So let's name this object more appropriately, Player. Currently, there isn't much to look at, so what we're going to do is right-click on the player object that we just created and select 3D Object Sphere. This is only temporary, as we're going to be creating a custom mesh to simulate jelly physics in Agario. Just for presentability's sake, we can name this mesh. Now that we have set up the scene, we can start programming the script that will make the player move towards the mouse position. To do this, in the project view, create a new folder this will be named scripts, and this will just help us keep organized for later when we have a mountain of assets. Inside this folder, we're going to actually create the code file by right clicking and selecting create new C sharp file. This will give us the option to name it. And although the name you choose is entirely optional, I've decided on move. Now to edit the script, double click on it, but because I'm using a different IDE, I'll go up to Assets, Sync Mono Develop Project. If anyone's interested in getting this development environment, there will be a link in the description with a tutorial on how to get it. Okay, so now we can see the code that Unity's auto-generated. This top component is C-sharp gathering the necessary resources to allow us to code. Next is a line where there is an auto-generated class named Move. This is because all object-oriented programming languages, like c -sharp, their code is split into classes. And the reason that it says colon monodevelop is because our class is inheriting from monodevelop, meaning that Unity can actually interact with our code properly. Inside the curly braces, there is some other code that we don't really need to worry about for now. So let's declare a variable, meaning that we're giving a name to some kind of data, in this case, the speed of the player. Because we want to be able to see the speed inside the Unity editor, we'll use the keyword public, which is followed by the data type that we want to use. In this case, it's a float, meaning a number with a few decimal places. Now we need to decide on a name for it. I'll choose speed. Now, whenever we write the keyword speed, we're referring to whatever data is currently stored in that variable. To end the line, we use a semicolon. Because the way we're moving the player is about 60 times a second, we'll be checking the mouse position, then moving slightly closer to it, we need a function that is called every frame. This is the update function, which we can use by writing void, meaning there is not a return type, then update, using a capital U, then an opening and closing pair of parentheses, because this function doesn't take any parameters, then some curly braces. Anything that we write in here is called the body of the function and will be called every frame. Inside here, we're going to declare another variable, this time not public, and because we want to refer to a position in 3D space, we'll create a vector 3. Make sure to use a capital V for that. This basically holds three floats, the X, Y, and Z position. This vector is going to hold the position of the mouse. Thus, I'll name it target. Now we're going to set it to the position of the mouse. Unfortunately, the position of the mouse is given in pixel coordinates. So to access it in something more usable, we write camera.main, which simply refers to the main camera in the scene, then add dot screen to world point. 
which converts the coordinates into a position in world space. Because this is a function, we need some parentheses. This function takes the position in coordinates as a parameter. We can get this by writing input.mouse position. Now we end the line by adding a closing brace and a semicolon. Now unfortunately, the z-axis of the target variable isn't correct. So what we can do is set the current z-axis of the player by writing target.z equals transform.position.z. Make sure to use the same name that you gave to the target variable earlier. Although we now have a variable that holds the position of the mouse in terms of world space, we need our player to move towards it based on the speed variable. To do this, we first write transform.position equals, which sets the position of the player to whatever we write after it. The function that we're going to use is vector3.move towards. Note the capitalization. This function takes three parameters. The first is the initial position, which is simply transform.position. The next, separated by comma, is the position that we need to move towards, which is the target variable that we created earlier. Finally, it requires a speed. Now we could just pass it the speed variable, but the problem with that is that if one computer was very fast and another slow and laggy, the player will move much faster towards the mouse for the person with the faster computer because the update function is being called more often. To fix this, the speed that we use should be speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Now end the line in a semicolon and our code is done. To get Unity to actually use the code that we just wrote, we must go back into Unity, select the player in the hierarchy, and now we can actually drag the code that we just created from the project window into the inspector. Now if you run the game by pressing the play button at the top of the Unity editor, we'll see that the player is not following the mouse. The reason that it's not moving is because the speed variable is zero. So I'll stop the game by pressing the play button once again, then change the speed variable to something like five. This is why we made the speed a public variable so that we could edit it in Unity. Now we can move the mouse and the player will follow. Now if we were to select the transform component of the mesh object in the hierarchy and change the scale on the x-axis to something like 5, then do the same for the y-axis, we can see that the player is still moving the same speed. In Agario, we know that the bigger you are, the slower you move. Although this feature seems difficult to implement, it's actually relatively simple. All we have to do is open back up our code file and on the line where we move towards the target vector, after we write multiplied by time dot delta time, just add divided by transform dot local scale dot x, which means that the speed of the player is divided by the size of the player. Now, if we play the game, we can see that because of the player's size, it's moving very slowly. But if we change its size back to 1 on the x and y axis, we can see that it's now moving much faster. That's all for this tutorial. Make sure to subscribe so you can see the next tutorial, where we'll be adding a bit of color to our game. If you had any problems, feel free to post a comment and I'll try to answer it as quickly as possible. For any of you that don't feel like making it, here's a download link in the description where you can get the Unity project file with fully commented code. Thanks for watching. Bye.